It's uh, great to have here uh, Dave McKinney, uh, who is a uh, founder of the uh, Filter Squad uh, and also, uh, you know, well known for uh, uh, bringing out the app Discover. Uh, you know, now in 2011, so almost three years ago. Uh, so, hi, Dave, and great to have you on the show. How's it going? That's fantastic. I'm really excited to be here with you. It's great. Uh, so it's great to have you and, uh, you know, quite a few hours between us because uh, you're in Australia, of course, and uh, I'm in London. And uh, so we're going to talk about Discover today. And uh, uh, it's been in the press uh, all, all over the place, essentially, in the last uh, uh, 24, 48 hours uh, because you released a completely new version of the product for iOS 7. And so Discover moves from being simply a, a tool for finding similar artists and navigating through profiles and, and finding information about those artists uh, to becoming a completely social experience. So uh, I want to, you know, of course, it's been covered a lot in the press, uh, but I want to, uh, what I want to start with, and I think what listeners on DMT are going to be very interested in is the process as well as to how you went about uh, uh, creating this product over, over the last uh, year or so. So uh, can you talk us through uh, briefly how that uh, came about and uh, how you decided to go in this direction? Sure. So I think, um, you know, I'm a long time um, music fan um, and uh, I guess I spent a lot of time, you know, discovering music and spending time in record stores and DJing and making music. And I think there are lots of different ways that people interact with music and enjoy music and discover music. And um, discover the original application was, was one way to do that. It's a very active mode. You're navigating through these visual maps of the world of music. And that's um, fantastic for some types of people, but there's other people who like to enjoy music in different ways too. And so I think what we wanted to do was to look at how people do interact with music out in the real world and try and bring some of those into the application and make it better and more efficient and uh, a better way to discover music. So, um, you know, if you go to a record store and there's someone behind the counter who hands you a record that they think you might like, based on what you bought previously, then that's a really great recommendation. It can be really valuable. Or you might have a friend who just found a new song and, you know, they share it with you um, and, you know, that becomes a, a part of your life. So yeah. there's all these different ways of discovering music, plus there's, you know, fantastic algorithmic ways to deliver music, social ways to deliver music, um, straight up, you know, digging for beats kind of music, you know, yeah. solo, digging deep into music. So there's all these different ways. And so I think our goal is... You know, let's try and provide lots of different ways for people to discover and enjoy music, whatever their preferred mode is. And, you know, the, the music's out there and it's kind of waiting to be enjoyed. So our goal is really to make it easier for you to access that. Absolutely. And, and so uh, I'm going to put like a, a run through uh, of Discover alongside our interview as well, because uh, I was just very excited. I, I installed Reflector, which allows, allows it to yeah, record. Yeah, it works, yep. really, it works really well. So I'm going to do like a brief uh, uh, um, capture of, uh, of a, a few functions of, of the app so I can put that alongside <laughs> the video. Uh, but, oh, that's uh, great. You're going to beat us to it. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, uh, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, how do you feel about, you know, how do you uh, go about uh, partnering with some of the streaming partners you have? Because one of the uh, core features of Discover, of the new uh, version of Discover is the fact that uh, you have managed to integrate uh, RDO, Deezer and Spotify, Spotify and SoundCloud within uh, the uh, the ecosystem so that if you are, uh, for example, a premium subscriber on RDO or, or uh, Spotify, you are able to log in with your details and then uh, listen to tracks in their entirety on the service. So, uh, so uh, that's a gr great feature because it kind of, it brings together services that are completely separated at the moment. Uh, it creates, uh, it, it breaks down barriers uh, uh, of, you know, uh, fragmentation uh, within the music uh, streaming space and also allows people to share tracks across different services. So uh, how did you get the services on board? I know that some of them uh, still have quite a, a lot of reservations in making that uh, type of access available to third party companies. Um, I think really the goal for all music companies right now is uh, to deliver music that people want in the way that they want it. Yeah. And so like everyone's working in that. And I think that the barriers to adoption of streaming services are not uh, necessarily audio versus Spotify or one company versus another. It's actually more about um, if people want to pay for access to streaming music versus ownership of music where they traditionally have paid for music that they own. So I think the big barriers and the shifts in the market are around those things. And so actually... Encouraging people to stream music in any form is good for the system in general. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, 
with that regard, for us, it's about trying to find a way to satisfy the different needs of different types of users. Some people love Spotify, some people love Audio, and some people love Deezer. All of those services have fantastic um, catalog now, great um, distribution to different territories, and um, you know some fantastic UI and experiences around the music too. So I think um, it's a choice that we all get to make now as music consumers. We get to choose which service we want to use, and uh, you know I think that's really fantastic. So. Um, I think that's probably the backbone of um, you know why we're interested in supporting different types of music services, yeah. and um, it's also I think you know in some territories you don't have access to all of the different streaming providers or content even in iTunes necessarily yeah. or YouTube. Yeah. So for us, it's about trying to find the best possible way we can for you to listen to the music wherever you are and um, with whatever service you prefer, and then. Um, you know, for each of the streaming services, they still like we require a premium account for you to use it. So, in that regard, um, we're really just a part of the funnel for those guys. Where um, you know, there's different users that may come to their service via us. They require a premium account, so they still get that benefit of subscription for them. And um, we're really about uh, creating a layer on top of that streaming infrastructure that yeah. Spotify, Audio, and Deezer have built, SoundCloud too. So. Now, our goal is to provide an experience around the music. Those guys are excellent at that, you know, heavy duty, broad scale, large catalog music um, you know, access distribution. So, uh, you know, our goal is to uh, allow different types of users to access those different services however they want to. Yeah, sure. And uh, looking at the, the way um, Discover has evol evolved as well, uh, going from uh, being a, a paid for app to being a free app now on the App Store. Uh, that also changes the scope, of, I guess, of your of your endeavor in terms of where you want to take the company. So uh, I was writing a piece uh, a couple of days ago, and uh, sort of I wrote the phrase that you guys are going from being sort of a, a more of a, a niche product for people that are actively seeking that particular experience, trying to become more of a mass market play. W would that be a fair a fair comment to make? Yeah, I think the goal for us is that the more people we get into the system, the more that other people can find great music. Because yeah. definitely we've seen that when people share music, it can be a really valuable source of discovery. And so it's a classic network sort of effects play. We get people into the system and they're sharing music and they're active in the system, commenting on music, liking on music, reposting and sharing music. Then that's actually good for the other users. And so that's really our goal. Uh, yeah the best possible way to get as much music flowing around as we can. And um, that's, you know, it's really exciting to see people using it in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, how do you get, uh, I mean, of course, it's a question that you probably asked yourself a hundred times, uh, a million times while making this app. But, you know, the main challenge when you create an app of this kind is to get people to come back to it over and over again. Uh, yep. And so, uh, you know, what do you think are the main drivers within the application that are going to get people to uh, keep coming back to it? I think, like, we, I have a personal goal which is, uh, for me, I want to help you find one new song that becomes a part of your life. Yeah. If I can do that, I'm happy we're done. Like that's, that's, I'm a, we, we, we're done. So that's my goal for you is I want to find that a song that becomes special to you. Yeah. If we can do that for you, then I want to do that for someone else. And I think really the system is designed so that we're trying to do that for as many people as we can. So... Uh, I think in terms of um, how we bring people back to an application or any of those things, it's actually about whether we can deliver something that's valuable to you. Yeah. If we can surface a song or a video or an artist or a recommendation that you think's good, that's that's our goal. That's It's as simple as that. So if we can do that, um, then you may want to come back and see what else we find you. Absolutely. And, and, it's, uh, yeah. and it's, uh, it's also important to stress that the app is not uh, all about... Uh, finding new music, you also offer a great service for people that are wanting to track what the artists they love are doing at the moment because you have some, some great tracking tools that pull together articles, photos, reviews, new videos that are posted about artists you already follow on social right. networks or you've played on Spotify. So that also plays a big part in, I mean, at least for me, while I was playing around with the beta over the last few months, uh, to, to go back to the application and see what was happening uh, to the artists that I'm already following. So. Uh, what is the proportion on, like, on your side that you think works best in terms of offering people information on artists they already love uh, and also introducing them to artists that they might not know yet? Mm. It's, it's really it's like, it's fascinating for us, and we yeah. don't know the answer. 
Um, <laughs> You know, it's really great, but it's it's really um, interesting for us to try and figure out and understand. And the best way for us is actually to watch how people use the application. Um, now, uh, here comes my son. He's coming in to say hello. Excellent. <laughs> um, so, but basically, um, you know, there's there's a couple of different approaches. One is to bring you new content and music for artists that you follow. And we do that now, so we kind of track what the artists are publishing to various places, YouTube and SoundCloud, iTunes new releases, Spotify and audio, uh, articles on the web and photos too. And that's, that's sort of pretty straightforward. The next step beyond that is really to start surfacing content from those artists that you care about, maybe content that's happened in the past that we think is special for that artist. Yeah. Um, and that's coming soon. It's just um, it's not there yet, but it's, you know, there's so many things we can do and we're just trying Ooh, to understand... Yeah. <laughs> know what we should do and how we should do it and really we're just starting um you know there's okay. some there's been some technical things to solve to get to this point um in terms of you know there's a fair few moving, moving parts but um so much to do and we, i mean really just starting so it's sort yeah, of yeah. going to be guided by you know what we see in the application and what people seem to be enjoying and um, where we should go from here. Absolutely, and what I love about it is the fact that there is a lot going going on in the background, and and, and I can tell. But uh, the design is still very uh, straightforward, and, and it's not cluttered. It's not. It doesn't feel busy uh, mm. in terms of functionality. But uh, there is a lot happening in the background. So I guess that was a pretty tough uh, order uh, to 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 achieve. It, yeah, but it's a great challenge. So yeah. I mean, I, to me, it feels busy still. I can always. I always think we can do things better. Yeah. And. Um, it's for me the, the application as it is now. The service feels like a good start. I think yeah. it sort of indicates what we want to do and what we believe in, um, and you know we'll just continue to work to make it better. Uh, but it's very much just baby steps, you know, beginning, um, and we'll see, you know, how how it goes. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time, and of course, you know, fantastic coverage all over the web in the last couple of days. Uh, I highly recommend that you go and check out this cover uh, if you have an iOS 7 uh, phone. Last question, any news on whether you are going to try and pour this on Android? Uh, I've, I've heard quite a few friends of mine that are Android fans that were uh, clamoring for it. Definitely. Um, we're interested in Android for sure. Um, we've messed around a little bit in the past. Um, with Android, so we actually did build a version of Discover, you know, the map interface for Android already. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen, but we have uh, quite a bit of content already going to the web, so yeah. we have our little story pages for different pieces of content. And really, um, you know, we're interested in, again, providing access to all different types of people, so whether iPhone, Android, on the web, yeah. it doesn't really matter to us. Um, we're not sort of actively building Android right now, but it's certainly uh, kind of high sense. up on the interest list. Yeah, and um, iPad, you know, full iPad support as well. That would be awesome. That's great. And uh, uh, so it's discover.info. I will not put uh, iTunes links because I know they always break. I will just direct people to discover.info and then they can find the links to the App Store directly from there because I'm sure you guys have done a better job than I could in uh, uh, pointing to the right uh, okay. iTunes App Store links uh, for, for uh, international. Uh, it's uh, absolutely a pleasure to have you on uh, once again. Thanks so much. It's great to see you again. And, um, you know, maybe we'll get to catch up again in January or something. Yeah, exactly. And uh, thanks so much for listening to this uh, special report from DMT on the new Discover app. Thank you. Check out digitalmusictrends.com and sign up to the weekly newsletter.